Hello, Scorpio viewers. I'm going to be looking into your situation, what your person is thinking, feeling, uh, wanting, what actions they might be taking over the next couple weeks. I'm just going to lay the cards out and see uh, what I can channel and how that story goes. So let's get into it. All right, for the Scorpios that are drawn to this video, what is the story regarding love? I do feel like you have secret admirers around you. I feel like you do have people that notice you that might be interested. Um, God, what am I getting with this group? Because I know the last video I did for you guys, I was getting there were some blocks with your love life. But I feel like you're starting to address those blocks. So I think people are starting to notice you. Or maybe before they didn't so much. Let's see what the story is. What, the, what is the story regarding love, please? Be very clear, very forward. What is the story here regarding love? Queen of Cups. King of Cups. Ooh, that's really good. Okay. Ace of Swords. Four of Cups. It's very interesting energy. Nine of Cups. Eight of Wands, Two of Pentacles, all right. Hmm. This could be an ex that's coming back around and you might be wondering, um, you might be surprised they're coming back around, like maybe you didn't expect it, like this could have been somebody that you really loved for a long time and you maybe just thought that was done with and maybe they're coming back around now. Maybe somebody's new could be coming in too. Um, let me look. Let me see what I can channel from these cards. I want to look at them and, and see what the story is here. I do definitely get though for those that have been watching my my readings um, for Scorpios. I do feel like you guys have been maybe um, there's like there's just like this little crack, like this little opening that I see that's like kind of allowing love in, whereas before maybe you weren't. Maybe it wasn't even conscious. Maybe you were kind of subconsciously shutting love out, but I feel like something is kind of starting to shift for you where you're a little bit more open to love and people are starting to notice that. Like they're noticing your energy has shifted a little bit, if that makes sense. So I feel like this is a true love that wants to come back around. Um, I feel like somebody sabotaged it. So either you sabotaged it or they sabotaged it in the past. Because I get, like, I get somebody that you have a history with. And this Mercury retrograde energy might be bringing them back around. I feel like there are still complications with this person, though. It's like, it's like you had true love here. You see this? You had the King and Queen of Cups. That's, like, the best. I mean, as far as, like, you know, Cups, Wands, Swords, Pentacles, you know, the King and Queen of Cups are the best out of those suites. Definitely, you know, Cups is about love. It's about emotion. It's fulfillment. Um, you know, this is a power couple. This is a couple that's that's empathetic, that's loving, that's, um, you know, vulnerable with each other. And I think that you guys were vulnerable with each other or you both wanted to be, whether you spoke it or not, is like it was just kind of this this understanding, like this deeper knowing, even if it wasn't spoken, it's like you guys just have that kind of soul bond. You have that very deep connection where you just understood each other. But somebody sabotaged it. So either you sabotaged it because you weren't used to it, which would make sense because I did get in the last reading that there are these blocks to your love life. So maybe it was something that you were unfamiliar with. Like you started being happy and you were like, wait, no, uh, this isn't my usual pattern. Like this isn't somebody that I would normally date. It's kind of like you, like you saw them as more than a friend. I mean, I think you would have to with that kind of soul deep connection, but it was like it was unfamiliar. Um, so for some of you sabotaged it, but for others, for the majority of you, I think that they probably sabotaged it. Um, but it's whatever your story is, so just take it how it resonates. And again, also don't get caught up on gender. It could be male, male, female, female, male, female. Um, don't, if I say he, he or she, don't get caught up on that. It's just whatever the energy you're in, however it resonates. So don't get, don't get, yeah, don't get stuck on that. But yeah, it's like you had true love here. You had this deep connection. Might have been a bit of a complicated connection, but you know, I think, 
it was very real. It was very emotional. It's like you, you, it was like a, it's a past life connection, I think. And there might not have been closure with this person. This, this person might be coming back around um, for some of you to, to be with you, but for others, it might be for closure. It might be coming back around to, to finish that chapter. It's like there's this, this unresolved energy. It's like you guys have this deep connection and somebody just sabotaged it. And so it's like it didn't really... There's so many things that are like left unanswered, you know what I mean? Somebody just got scared and, you know, this Ace of Swords energy we have here, it's just such a strong sabotage energy. You know, Ace of Swords, that's like, look at this character. Um, you know, this is somebody who's very logical. This is somebody who would, you know, feels like weakness has to be banished. So it's almost like they were, like you guys were really open with each other, like you really loved each other. And they just got freaked out because the connection was so deep and it was so unfamiliar. It just was not what they were used to. Um, and they realized that it would require them to be vulnerable. It would require heart-to-heart -heart conversations. It would require a lifelong commitment. And it was just so unfamiliar to them that they sabotaged it. They might have challenged you. They might have pushed you away. They might have started arguments for no reason. Um, they might have ghosted you. They might have... They just sabotaged it. They just... the the. It's, it's like it got so deep so quickly. Um, or I mean, maybe maybe not even quickly because I do see a history here. I feel like this is probably somebody that you've known for a while. I don't think that it would be like a new... I don't feel like this is somebody that you met last week. You know what I mean? I feel like this is a this is somebody that you have this deep history with. Um, but with Ace of Swords, it's like this is like logic. This is like... This could also be needing to fight for something, like just needing, just having this this self sabotage mindset of of thinking that life has to be a battle, that everything has to be a struggle, that things can't just be easy, that you know, drama is normal is dr like a lot of drama is is what they're used to in relationships. A lot of conflict is what they're used to in relationships. You know what I mean? It's that it's that kind of mentality where they just feel like like life just has to be a struggle, like relationships aren't happy and living and they're not they're 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 kind of like they, it's like they were happy with you and then they're like no this isn't this how could this be real life isn't a fairy tale this is you know like something's gonna happen this person is gonna end up cheating on me or they're they're gonna like there's no way it's just this per it's just gonna be this perfect and this good that doesn't make any sense that's not how life is that's not how my past has been why would why would this be for me why would I be good enough for this you know it's this self-sabotage kind of energy and so, so yeah, you guys had this deep connection and they were wanting that marriage and commitment, commitment and maybe even long-term marriage with you. They were seeing you as their person. They were seeing you as the one and it scared them. It's really freaked them out. So they took like a 10 steps backwards, um, and challenged you, I think, you know, kind of like they just started getting afraid because of how deep they were feeling for you. And they, um, yeah, they just sabotaged it. They just started overthinking things. They started expecting the worst. They started challenging you to see how much you would tolerate, to see if maybe you were, maybe, you know, maybe you, you will end up cheating on them. Or maybe, because like, there's a strong, for somebody, there's a strong fear of cheating. There's a strong fear of disloyalty. Maybe they've been cheated on in the past. I got that pretty strongly with this group. Um... You know, they just, they, they aren't used to that. They weren't, they didn't get how something that good could last for long, you know. They were worried it was just the honeymoon phase or whatever. So, so yeah, they took, they took a lot of steps backwards and they went back into this logical, defensive, cold, maybe ghosting you or just challenging you, being harsh with you, being cold, being, um, I want to hear, ruthless, uh, being distant or playing games just just very they went back it's like they stepped out of their comfort zone fully and they were just completely open and then it just scared them because it was so unfamiliar so they went right back to the the logic and the sabotage and the, the familiar this could also be somebody who who feels like they need things to be a challenge for or they used to feel like they needed things to be a challenge for them like, they needed, like, it was almost like it was just so easy with you. It was so natural that they, again, it was just like this self-sabotage. Like, they think they think that things just can't be that easy and that simple. And 
maybe it's almost like they're used to having to chase people. They're used to people. They're used to pe- they're used to people being emotionally unavailable with them. And with you, it was so different. So it's almost like maybe they they do have that little bit of where they just need things to be a challenge. Like they need something to fight for. They're just used to that mindset of always having to fight for things. You know what I mean? And it's like they're kind of like in this stagnant energy when they don't have that. Could also be that maybe you became a little bit bored and tired of the relationship because they kept sabotaging everything and challenging you. And so you kind of got into this energy where you started playing hard to get a little bit and kind of pulling back where you're like, you know, I'm tired of this person ghosting me. I'm tired of this person arguing. I'm tired of this person questioning me all the time. You know, you might have pulled back a bit. Or again, this could be vice versa. So it's whatever your story is. It's possible that this is your energy and you're the one that sabotaged this connection and you're the one that ran and was afraid and um they got tired of having to prove themselves to you and having to you know tell you they were staying and they got dissatisfied with the relationship and they kind of pulled away because they're like you know what I'm tired of putting myself out there for this person that's like like they didn't they couldn't read you they didn't get that you were just scared of getting hurt I don't think you know if that's if that's your story I think that they just saw that like you were crazy or you were uninterested or you were whatever. They're like, I don't know what's going on, so I'm going to hold space for them and distance myself and see if they come back around to me. This could be a, a relationship that, because I do see the history here, but maybe in the beginning it started out kind of quick because I do see a very passionate, very emotional, up and down kind of relationship here that you guys used to have. But I'm wondering if maybe you needed a stronger base because it is true. I do feel the energy of like true love here. I do feel like a soul-based connection, like a past life connection here. I do feel this is a soulmate or a twin flame. But I'm also wondering if maybe you guys didn't have a strong enough base. Like you needed to have more of a friendship too. You needed to have more open communication. You needed to take things a little bit slower and get to know each other because it's like it got so deep so quickly that this other person, either you or this other person, just, it was, like, really passionate, and then it just wasn't, you know what I mean? It's, like, all that passion was there, and then it was just arguments or ghosting or just, you know, someone being afraid of getting hurt and running, um, that kind of energy. So it's, like, the passion and the emotion is amazing. It's beautiful, but you needed that friendship as a base, too. You needed that open communication. You needed to... Um, to get on the same page with each other a little bit more than you were. I think there was a lot of misunderstanding with this person, definitely. So it's like somebody... It would make sense, too, why there wasn't closure with this person. It's like you guys had this deep, intense relationship, and then it just kind of just fizzled out. Because it's like there's all that passion there. But again, you need a much stronger base than what you had. Even though you have that history and you have that soul bond and that psychic connection, you still... It's almost like this person liked the idea of you, but they lacked the capacity to actually handle the reality of you, like actually handle a real, healthy, stable relationship. You know what I mean? I feel like this is very passionate and very up and down. And I think when it started becoming a, like a healthy, stable relationship or it started, you know, just getting serious, that's when they were like... They clung on to that chaotic energy instead. You know, they sabotaged it. They questioned it. They weren't sure how things could just be happy and normal and good. You know what I mean? Like, they clung on to the drama. It's like you had all this passion there. And instead of channeling that into romance and love, which it was originally, it's like they channeled that all into chaos instead. Like, they just made it chaotic and argumentative and that kind of energy instead, you know? It's like that passion was there and they just kind of went the wrong direction with it. Um... And it's almost like they don't know what to do when things are normal and stable. It's like they don't know how to just have a normal, healthy relationship. So I think that either you or them was kind of getting, it's like, it's like boredom or stagnation or depression. It's like you're tired of, somebody was like tired of this, the sabotage. Somebody was tired of somebody else sabotaging everything and ghosting and being difficult. Somebody got tired of that crap. And then somebody else here played hard to get. But the thing that they didn't realize is that this person that you were playing hard to get from felt like a frog to you. They felt, so if this is you playing hard to get or this is um, 
this could be you playing hard to get and it's like you think they're coming after you but they feel like a frog they don't feel good enough to come after you they feel they already have all this insecurity and this chaotic energy and so when you when you distance yourself they were just like okay i'm shit i am shit this and it makes sense with the self-sabotage it's like this confirmed you distancing yourself kind of confirmed in their head that they were just crap you know what I mean? They're like, oh, this person is going to leave me after all. I'm right. It's like they had this fear that you were going to leave or that you were going to cheat or do something. And so it's like they made that happen. It's like they sabotaged it and they pushed you away and they made things difficult. And then when you actually finally got tired and exhausted and you started pulling away from them, here they are looking at you like this frog, like, oh, yeah, see, this was going to happen all along. I knew it. I'm glad I guarded myself I'm glad I was prepared for this I'm glad you know what I mean it's like you just confirmed their insecurities but not your fault like they did this to themselves it's like they you know it was like a subconscious pattern and they might not even realize they were doing it but it's like they 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 just did this to themselves and it's like when you when you finally left and got tired of it you're like yeah see this person wouldn't have stayed long term they wouldn't have wanted me long term but again they sabotaged themselves they did it and you know, this, this energy, this eight of wands, it's like this person isn't even, they're, they're looking for, they're not even, they're not playing this game anymore. They've gotten tired of that. If this is in the past or if this is like, I feel like for a lot of you, this is probably what telling of the story of what happened in the past, not necessarily what's going on now. It's just kind of telling you that this person is thinking about coming back around. Um, but this person, this eight of wands, this is like creativity and passion and whatnot. They're looking at this. They're looking at like, okay, how do I have this stable connection with this person when it's so passionate but so chaotic and there's not a strong enough base there? You know what I mean? Like when this person sabotages things and they're not used to a healthy connection and they're not used to stability and they're, they're just always challenging me. Like how do we transmute that passion into something stable and long term? Like how do we have the passion and the love and the romance in the great sex that we have, but also have something that's stable where it's not constant fights or ghosting or run, one person chasing the other or me running away or them running away. Like how do we, this person got tired of that energy and they looked, started looking forward and they're like, okay, how do we have this like stability with this connection? You know, like how do we develop this friendship base too, where we can communicate openly with each other and actually have something long term. But again, keep in mind for some of you, this is you. You're the one that sabotaged you. You're the one that, that pushed this person away and challenged them and they eventually got tired of it and just kind of distanced themselves and you didn't realize that they were distancing themselves hoping you would come back for them. You know, that could be the situation too. It's so, so it's however, it's, you know, the, the energy I'm getting, it's it, whether it's you or them, it's however that resonates with you. So in that case, that would be them that's kind of figuring out like, hey, I want to come back around. I want to do this again. But like, how do we transmute this passion? How do we have this balance so that they don't just sabotage it again? Like, how is this? I want to make sure this person's going to be more stable. I want to make sure this person's going to stick around for the long haul and not just want the idea of me, but actually want me long term, you know? Um, okay, so whoever sabotaged it, let me just pull a few more cards really quick. So whoever sabotaged it, what's what's going to be different this time? Like, please show me with these cards. Like, what exactly is going to be different? What are they trying to do differently this time that's actually going to make this work? Like, what's going to, how is this any different than what it used to be? Like, what's what are they planning over the next couple of weeks? And Mercury Retrograde does bring a lot of X's back. So it really makes sense that this would be the current energy. That's not really surprising. Denial, complicated, listening, rigid, and high priestess of water. I think in the past they weren't willing to work through their own issues because it's like denial, like they were de in denial about how complicated the connection was, you know, about it's like all that passion just turned into something kind of toxic, you know, and I think that they just kind of wanted to go back to how it was before. But I mean, at the same time, they were sabotaging it, you know what I mean? And so it's like they were in denial about how complicated they are and about how complicated the connection is. And they were in denial about like the healing work that they needed to do, you know, they just kind of clung to their old patterns and they just weren't taking responsibility for themselves. They were just sabotaging and, and not taking um, responsibility for their role in the connection. You know, it's like when you left them, 
or you distance yourself and, and played hard to get and just got tired of it. It's kind of like they just they just played the victim. They weren't like, oh, I did this and I challenged them and I hurt them and I did all these things that made them leave. No, they didn't feel that when you left. They were like, yeah, this person just didn't love me. They didn't love me enough. They never loved me. Like they were going to cheat anyway or they were going to do this anyway. Like, so it makes sense that they're leaving now. It's like they just sabotaged it. And then when you, when someone got fed up and finally just said, screw this, I'm done doing this to myself and left. It's like, they just, that confirmed their insecurities. You know what I mean? They didn't see their role in it. They didn't see how much they pushed you away and how much they hurt you. Um, or vice versa, you know, you didn't see how much you pushed them away and hurt them. And now you're starting to see it and you're wanting to come back around and get a second chance with this person. But I think um, what it's kind of saying here is is they're trying to listen more now. They're realizing things were rigid. They're re they're starting to try to realize the, the role they played in this connection and it being rigid and in this, you know, it being stuck, it being trapped. It's like this crow is looking over and looking at this light and they're like, oh, there is something over there. There is light over there. There is good energy and love over there. I just wasn't allowing myself to see it. I was just sabotaging it. I wasn't looking at the the, high, the bigger picture. I wasn't, you know, seeing this connection for what it could be, what it is. Um, and so they're realizing that if they come back around, they need to listen more. They need to really try to not just be defensive, but actually ground and listen and, you know, hear your side of things and really develop that strong base if they come back around. And I think with the high priestess of water too, it's also saying that healing is the answer because they have this toxic subconscious pattern of just needing everything to be a struggle, needing things to be a fight, you know, not knowing what to do with themselves. It's like things need to be a battle because maybe they just don't know what to do with themselves if they're just sitting still, you know what I mean? It's like maybe they have these insecurities that they haven't really faced. And so it's like when they're just sitting still, it's like they feel like they just, um, they're not good enough, you know? They feel like, like life has to be a struggle. Like they maybe have all this passionate energy inside themselves that they just don't know what to do with. They don't know how to channel it properly. Or they just feel like they don't deserve just a happy, normal relationship, like a happy, stable relationship. So it's like everything just has to be a struggle for them. And so I think that, you know, recognizing that, that they need to, with this water energy, that they need to heal, that they need to, you know, break this pattern, that they need to channel those that passion into create creative outlets, you know, maybe doing artwork or music or... Um, or exercise, or maybe even, because this is a very passionate person, so I can almost see them, like, taking martial arts classes, or, like, exercise classes, or, like, gymnastics, or running, something where they're really physically active, because this person kind of has, like, a warrior-type energy, where it's, like, they're very, there's just a lot going on inside them, so they can't really just, like, sit back and relax, but I'm, like, maybe if they, if they, you know, took like exercise classes or they they you know got into music or artwork or just channeling that passion and creativity so that they can put all that energy into something instead of just letting it fester inside themselves and being at war with themselves you know what I mean like they need some creative outlets they need hobbies and passions that they're pursuing and if they don't have those things if they don't have those outlets for all their passion and all their emotion and all their energy it just kind of like gets trapped inside them and just festers inside them. And it's just like this chaos inside them and just kind of comes out and explodes onto the people they love. Um, so, you know, art, creativity, exercise, um, like yoga, gymnastics, martial arts. Uh, I'm gonna say, I don't know why I saw um, diving out of an airplane. I don't know why I saw that, but it's like that kind of energy it's it's like it's like go out and do stuff be active go travel go do things together because it's like this person can't like they can't hold a nine to five job they can't just sit still they'll get bored they need things to be kind of interesting and creative and exciting and passionate so it's like you kind of have to like find that balance here with the two of pentacles you know because when you're in like a long-term relationship, you know, it, it does get familiar to a point, but it's like, that's why you have to kind of keep the romance alive, like go travel together, go on date nights together, um, do, you know, get into maybe take an art class together, maybe, um, 
you know, start a band together. We do some stuff like that, that kind of energy where it's like it's it's something that keeps it exciting, something that keeps it like fresh and exciting and romantic. Um, but also having that stable friendship and that open communication and that strong base so that if things, you know, are too normal or whatever, they don't just run, you know what I mean? Like there needs to be just more of a, a balance definitely in this relationship. But again, this is a very passionate person. So they're not somebody, they're not somebody who's going to have like the nine to five desk job and like the the house with the white picket fence and the kids you know what I mean it's not going to be that kind of life with this person I don't feel it's it would be more of like the the alternative kind of lifestyle where it's like you got I don't know like you guys would still be going out and going to like if you went to clubs like you guys would still want to be doing that or like going out and traveling and and just going on adventures and just keeping things romantic and exciting um but again, they also need that creative outlet, not just in the relationship, not just like keeping that passion and romance alive and balanced in the relationship, but also in um, their own lives. Like I feel like maybe they didn't have that before, which was a, probably a big issue for you guys. It's like you were their everything. And so they freaked out because it's like they knew if they lost you, they would lose everything they had. You know what I mean? So it's like this time around, they if this person does come back around, you need to kind of make sure that they have something going on in their lives more than they did before. Like they need to have music or art or, um, or just exercising, exercising. I feel really strongly would be great for them getting into some type of sport or something of that nature. I feel would be a really good release of their energy. Um, and just this, this outlets, they just, they really need outlets for their passion and their creativity and all this energy they have inside them. Otherwise, they just end up being at war with themselves and they end up exploding on you and on everyone else that they love. And they end up clinging to everybody that they love because it's like they don't have anything else going on in their life. So, you know, having that, those outlets would, would help them because it would help them maybe have something that they could just channel that energy into so they don't end up exploding on people or they don't end up like running or just getting too into like too um they're just in their head a lot like they overanalyze and overthink a lot like they just it's just they're just at war with themselves they've been at war with themselves so they really need those outlets and I think it would help them too because then your relationship isn't going to be everything to them. It's going to be like a huge priority to them, of course. You know, you're both romantic. So, of course, it's going to be a priority. But they're going to have hobbies and passionates and passions and, and friends and things, other things that they love outside of you. And so it's going to help them because it's, it's not, they're not going to get terrified. They're not going to be as terrified as they were before of you, of you leaving because they actually have other things going on in their life too. You know what I mean? So it's a little bit more stable and more balanced. So, so yeah, the key for you guys is really this person needs to do Whether this is you or them, this person does need to do the healing work. They, they do have a lot of damage that they haven't healed. There, there is a lot there. They need to take responsibility for themselves, for, this, for their role in the connection, um, and for, for healing and, and just finding this balance. I think that they are wanting to, though. I do feel them wanting to come back around. I do feel them missing you. This is the kind of connection they could never get over. Like they might have tried to push you aside for a long time and maybe they were insecure for a while, but it's going to, it's one of those connections that's going to probably keep coming back around because the love is so strong there and because this is such a deep rooted past life connection. So anyway, if this resonates, please subscribe to me, um, like, comment, share me out. Thank you.